Hi there guys, it's Mike from MCQ Bushcraft here and welcome to another video. I've been out today wandering through the woodlands doing a bit of foraging, looking for different types of edible fungi that are very common in the spring months and some throughout the summer. And I found dryad saddle, dryad saddle polyporus squamosus is quite a nice edible. I've actually got one in my bag here. I gathered a few of the younger ones to actually eat. Very easy to identify, nice taste as well. And there's nothing that really looks like it at all at any times of the year that could be poisonous. But there is another type of mushroom that I'm looking for, and it's St George's mushroom. And I was walking through this woodland here, this area that's been cleared very slightly, and I found a very large ring of St George's mushrooms that I'm right on top of now. And I've got one just in my hand here, and it's quite a tasty mushroom in a respect, more, the, more texture than it is taste um, on its edibility, uh, much like the mushrooms you find in the supermarkets, the agaricus, same kind of texture, it remains firm when cooked and it can be added to various dishes and um, can really improve them quite, quite nicely, especially if you like edible mushrooms. But let's have a closer look at the ring that I'm standing on right now. You'll understand what I mean momentarily about the ring that's forming around me. There's actually a very, very large ring all the way around me that I can almost follow and trace through the leaves. At the edge of the mycelium, the actual fruiting bodies, the fungi, or the mushroom is forming. And if you look very, very closely in the leaves, you'll start to see the mushrooms forming a ring. And we're actually following this ring at the moment which is the edge of the mycelium, which is effectively what you could call the root structure under the ground, the actual fungus. What we're seeing is just the fruiting body, fruiting at the edge of the mycelium to obviously help it grow and expand as the nutrition has been used in the portion behind it. And in 10 years time, this ring will be even bigger. And we can keep following this round and round all the way back to where we started. And here we go. But if we look at the characteristics of this mushroom, we can see that it has white gills. And white gills is often something people avoid when foraging. It's, it's something that you always read that you should avoid on a mushroom when you're foraging. And, it, and it's really that written rule that when people are going out looking for mushrooms and they find one with white gills, they leave them alone. Like the destroying angel and the death cap, for example. You can see in the names that they're not ones you want to eat. But the dividing factor for this mushroom is the time of year. It's May, and no other mushroom that grows like it that's poisonous in an environment like this that I'm in will grow similar to this mushroom, will look like it. So the destroying angel, the death cap, the two I mentioned, they'll be in the autumn, in August and September. So it really is the time of year that divides this mushroom from the rest of them. And um, obviously it's characteristics as well, which we can cover also. If we look at the mushroom more closely, you can see it has tightly packed gills and they're free of the stipe. So as they come towards the stem, which is often called the stipe of the mushroom, you can see they then cut under and they don't actually join to the stipe completely. It also has a slight roll rim at the edge of the cap, which is another good feature for picking out the mushroom. Getting familiar with the way mushrooms smell is a very good way of identifying them also. St George's mushrooms have a very mealy smell, almost remind me of flour sometimes, that's slightly damp. Some say that it smells a little bit like cucumber, there is a little bit of that there, but it mainly is just a damp smell, a damp mealy smell. And it is quite a nice smell, but you can see how knowing a bit about mushrooms can really enhance your palate out in the field. Just having a bit of knowledge about them allows you to go out and forage things and if you have certainty about you and you really know what you're looking for, it does expand what food you are able to eat. But I'm going to get these in the game bag and continue my search throughout the day. Maybe I shall find some more rings, even though I've just gathered this much here. There are four or five times the amount of this surrounding me now, so I will leave those to do their job and just take a small selection for myself. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you very soon in another video. Take care.